Illustrative Math, Algebra 2. Unit 6, Lesson 1 is called Moving in Circles. All right, which one doesn't belong? Pause the video and try to come up with a reason for each, each clock and tell me why you think it doesn't belong. Okay. Um, the first one that stands out to me is probably, probably this one right here for B because it's the only one that um, with the minute hand at 30 minutes, it's not on an, on the hour. This is 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 10 o'clock. So that would probably what I would pick. Um, <clears throat> you know, you might have said A because it's the only clock that forms a right angle with the hands there if you're thinking geometrically. Um, same idea with C. It's the only one's forming an acute angle with the hands. And then um, for the last one right here, you could say... It's the only clock with the hour hand um, pointing downward. And, and I know it's not going directly down, but the hour hand is pointing in the downward direction. Whereas you look here, upward um, to the side, upward, this is the only one going down, I guess. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at this problem here. A ladybug lands on the end of a clock second hand when the hand is pointing straight up. The second hand is one foot long, and when it rotates and points directly to the right, the ladybug is 10 feet above the ground. So I kind of got this picture drawn here. Here's the clock on the wall. It's obviously not drawn to scale if my radius is one, um, or my second hand is one, and then it's 10 feet above the ground when it's to the right. But um, you kind of get the you get the idea here. This is 10 feet from when it's to the right to the ground. Okay, so how far above the ground is the ladybug? After 0, 30, 45, and 60 seconds have passed. So 0 seconds, it starts, um, let's see, let me read this again. At the end of it, all right, so 1 foot long. So it starts up top, but when it's to the right, it's 10 feet above. So the radius is 1, remember. So at 0 seconds, it's 11 feet above. At 30 seconds, it's kind of like down here so it's really 10 minus one so that would be nine 45 seconds it's back up to where it started um or back up to where it's exactly 10 feet above so that would be at 10 and 60 seconds it's back up to where i started so it's going to be back up here at 12 so it's really 10 plus the one, the one um, foot, so it's going to be 11 again. And then it's going to kind of repeat the whole thing over and over again. So, all right, so the next thing says pause here for class discussion. So obviously the maximum height is going to be when it's up here at 12, that's going to be 11, the maximum height of 11 feet. And a minimum height is when it's down here at the bottom, down here, that's going to be 9. And anything in between would be between 9 and 11 feet. So um, if the ladybug stays on the second hand of the clock, it will continue going around. So it's going to kind of repeat. It's going to kind of, you know, get back up here to 11. It's going to start decreasing, decreasing, de decreasing. It'll be the minimum will be at 9. Then it starts increasing. It gets higher, back to 10 at the middle, all the way up here at the top. You're back at 11 feet. Estimate how far above the ground the ladybug is after 10, 20, and 40 seconds. So 10 seconds are right there. A little bit greater than 10, not quite at 11, not halfway. I'd say, you know, I don't know, maybe, well, maybe it is halfway, actually, if you look here. I'd say maybe 10.5, roughly. 10.5 feet at 10 seconds. 20 seconds, it would be down here. So it's kind of the same thing. If I said it was 10.5, it's like I'm subtracting 0.5. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess it's 9.5 right there. I'll write it up here so you can see what it is. And then 40 seconds is all the way right there. So that's kind of the same as right there at 20 seconds. If you look here, they're kind of like the same height. If you think about it right there. Whether my hand is at 40 seconds or over here at 20, it's the same height. So I'm going to say that's probably 9.5 as well. 
Well, again, it's an estimate. It's not necessarily exact. It could be 9.4, 9.6, not really sure. <clears throat> it's definitely less than 10, though. Number four, if the ladybug stays on the second hand, <clears throat> describe how its distance from the ground will change over the next minute. What about the minute after that? So you're going to start at 11 feet above the ground, decrease till you reach 9 feet above at 30 seconds, then start increasing the height until it reaches 11 feet at 60 seconds, and it will continue to repeat. Okay. <clears throat> and I kind of already did that, but start here at 11. You know, it's at 10 at 15, 30, it's down at 9, and it starts increasing, the height's higher, 45, it's at 10, 60, you're back up to 11, and then it just repeats over and over again because it's going to keep going around, okay? All right, at exactly 315, <clears throat> Lady Bug, Bug flies from the second hand to the minute hand, which is 9 inches long. How far off the ground is the ladybug now? So at exactly 315. So you're at 315, you're on, let's see here. <clears throat> Flies from the second hand to the minute hand. So the minute hand is right here. Well, if the minute hand is nine inches long, right here, it's kind of the same height as the second hand, it's, it's, it's equally, you know, it's not quite as long here. Maybe I'll shrink it down. The second hand's a little bit longer than the minute hand. So maybe if I make it like that, still the same height, whether it's, you know, I'll put another, another hand here, um, in a different color. Let's see here. Maybe the, the second hand is in blue right here. You know, if it's longer, it doesn't matter. The height's still the same. It's going to be 10 at 315. So, um, so this is going to be right here. It's going to be 10 feet. Okay. <clears throat> oh, one more. At what time will the ladybug be at that height again? If it stays on the minute hand, be prepared to explain your reasoning. So the minute hand... Where's my red one here? Let me just swing that over. I got to get back to the same height. It's right here at 45. So that's 40, 30 minutes later. So at 3.45. Okay. All right. <clears throat> do you, what do you need to find? What do you need to find the location of point P marked on the clock? Okay. What, what do you need to find? Well, we would need to know how high the clock is off the ground, maybe a ruler, the radius would be helpful, something to measure from, maybe some type of scale. Those all would be helpful, all right? All right, work with the partner to determine how they can calculate the y-coordinate of point P. So the radius is 4. We know the x-coordinate is 3. Let me, um, let's see here, can I... Draw a triangle here. Let's do this here. If I were to make this into, I don't want an arrow on there. If I can make this into a right triangle here, if I look here, this is my right triangle. <clears throat> I'll highlight it. Right triangle. <clears throat> the hypotenuse is five. The radius is, I'm sorry, the X coordinate is three because you can get it right there from the corner on there. We would need to find the Y coordinate. So couldn't I just do a Pythagorean theorem? Three squared plus Y squared equals five squared. I get Y equals four. All right, so I know it's going to be positive 4 because it's it's up. I'm assuming this is the origin, 0, 0, if this is 3, comma, something. So your answer is 4, okay? All right, here's another one. What's the radius of the circle? So I know the x and the y coordinates, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a triangle, make a right triangle. 
right there. So if the x coordinate is negative 5, this side is 5. Well, really negative 5, but since it's a triangle, I guess we could call it negative 5. That's fine. We'll call this 12. Here's my right angle. So I'm going to call my radius C. So if I took negative 5 squared plus 12 squared, that's going to get me C squared. <clears throat> 25 plus 144 equals c squared so i get 169 equals c squared square root square root 13 equals c so the radius is 13. um if q has a y coordinate of negative four so here's q i got the second picture what is the x coordinate so they give us the radius um let's draw a triangle again here so i'm going to Take this, always take my triangle up to the x axis here. And I'm just doing a little bit of geometry. There's my right triangle. So if this is five, um, has a y coordinate of four. So it's, you know, we want to know the x coordinate, the y coordinate is four. So this side of the triangle is four, the x would be horizontally. So it's going to be x squared plus four squared equals 5 squared, x squared plus 16 equals 25, x squared equals 9. When I square root both sides, I get x equals 3, okay? Oh, I guess I skipped 2. Um, oh, shoot. I guess I got to redo that. Whoops. All right, let's do that again. Um, has a y coordinate of negative four, not four. Um, so it's really it's going to end up being the same thing, I guess. X comma negative four. What you're starting to see here is it's going to end up being the same thing. X squared plus negative four squared equals five squared. And you do this at sixteen twenty five again. And we get x equals 3. So it's the same answer. So you're going to, I guess I kind of already did the next one here. <clears throat> your your triangle is going to look like that. Okay, right there. So <clears throat> the y coordinate is 4. We're looking for x. So the y goes there. And again, it's a right triangle. I didn't put my right angle on the last one. Um, so for 3, it's going to be 4 squared plus x squared equals the radius is five I'm gonna get the same thing when i do my algebra i get x squared equals nine square root square root we get x equals three now here's the thing we went left three here so look at where we're at this is the origin here at zero zero so if i go left three you kind of got to know it's negative three now technically i guess i kind of when i kind of skipped this when you square root both sides technically you have plus and minus three for both of these so i guess you got to look at your picture and figure out where we are so since i went right it's not going to be negative three it's positive three and this one here is plus or minus three as well but since i went left it's technically going to be x equals negative three for that one okay and the last one number four a circle centered at zero zero has a radius of 10 feet Point S on the circle has an X coordinate of six. What's the Y coordinate of point S? So I'm going to draw a picture here. They didn't give us a picture for this one. So here's my X, Y. There's zero, zero. I'm going to put the circle right here. All right. This has a radius of 10. Point S on the circle has an X coordinate of six. So that means I go to the right, six. Six, comma, we don't know the Y coordinate. So the radius is 10. So kind of like, kind of means like a little bit past halfway here if the radius is 10. I could actually have two different points here, okay? Um, these points here could be 6 to the right if this is 6 on the x axis, and this would obviously be 10. Um, you could have two different, two different spots there could be in either one of those so i'm going to do two triangles the only difference is you're going to end up actually having the positive and the negative like we had on the um last ones we won't we won't choose one we'll actually just have both so 
you know, if this was my triangle right here, um, you know, let me highlight it here so you know what we're looking at. So that's my triangle. Radius is 10. The x coordinate is 6. We want to find the y coordinate. So that's going to be 6 squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. 36 plus y squared equals 100. Ends up getting me y squared equals 64. And when you square root, you, you kind of have to have a plus and minus there. So here's the thing. The plus is up here. This is going to be at positive 8. So this is 6, positive 8. And then this point down here, if I drew the same triangle, this would give me 6, negative 8 down there. So I guess you have um, two answers there. It could be 8 or negative 8 in that case. Now, if they told you which quadrant it's in, like they said, oh, it's in quadrant 1. Or it's in quadrant four. Okay, they always use Roman numerals for quadrants. Um, <clears throat> then you could figure out which sign it was. Quadrant four would be negative eight. Quadrant one would be positive eight. <clears throat> All right, consider what is true about X and Y coordinates of the ladybug if the clock is centered at zero, zero. So um, obviously, what is true about X and Y coordinates? So, you know... <clears throat> They are going to repeat as the ladybug travels around the clock. Um, well, they will reach a maximum at <clears throat> 12 and a minimum at six on the clock. <clears throat> Consider how the va <clears throat> values of the coordinates change as time passes. I would say that they, they if depending on where you start, they increase or decrease. If you start at the top like we did, they decrease and then increase and then they repeat okay here's a circle with radius of 15 units whose center is at zero zero if the y coordinate of point c is 12 what is the x coordinate so this time we know which quadrant we're in so we know the x coordinate is negative if i go left so you know i'll just draw my triangle right here so this is 15 out here I, i'm going to move my 15 over here it looks a little bit better so the y coordinate is 12 so we don't know x we need to find y so y is 12 here's x do a little pythagorean's theorem 12 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared um let's see here 225 minus 144, I think that's 89, or 81, I meant to say. Square root, square root. So x equals, technically it's plus or minus 9, but since I went left, we know that it's going to be negative 9. It would have to be the coordinate. It'd have to be this point right here would be negative 9, 12. Okay. <clears throat> Name two other points that must be on the circle. Well, if I move that point down here, this would be the pretty much the same x coordinate. It'd be negative nine, but now it's down here at negative twelve. That would work. Um, if I move that right here, so it's the same height here, that would be um, positive nine, positive twelve. So here's another point. Here's another point. And technically, if I went down here. It'd be positive 9, but negative 12 down here. Okay, so I named three extra points, okay, because I wanted to try hard there. Okay, um, I think that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.